So when I'm in an area as beautiful as this on a, a dedicated photo adventure like the monarch butterfly migration, uh, I'm thinking the variety of shots that I can get. You know, how can you maximize your photo opportunities and showcase the entire story of the monarch migration? Individual butterflies, it's macro shots, it's some of the flowers that they may be perching on, it's that edge to edge wild composition, that big photo. It's putting all that together in a multitude of shots in creative ways to get you a really, really top notch portrait portfolio from what is just a truly magnificent trip. Cool, so we have a small patch of flowers right here, some branches, some little leaves that butterflies keep on landing on, and this is a great opportunity for a big shot of a single butterfly. Individual shots of individual butterflies are a huge part of the story, and getting close to them right here on leaves and flowers makes for some great wildlife portraiture. So what I'm doing is I'm putting on my telephoto lens, pretty much the biggest thing I have, using the minimum focusing distance, and basically getting the frame filled with a butterfly. So I really, really like to find the butterfly that is essentially the wings are parallel to the lens. Uh, so that way the wings are over the back and it's facing, you know, essentially perpendicular to the lens. That way the entire set of the wings, all the wings are in focus. If the butterfly is looking at you, you have a really difficult time with depth of field. We've got a great case right here. So one of my absolute favorite shots is to get layers of monarchs on the tree trunks themselves, kind of an edge to edge composition thing. Once again, great example to use your telephoto, zoom most of the way in. I'm pretty much at 400 and I'm trying to fill the frame with the tree trunk and the butterflies right in the frame. So I'm gonna get a pretty deep depth of field, something like, again, F8. Let the shutter speed be as fast as it can to freeze your own hand movement and take the shot. Sometimes what you'll find is the butterflies are distant enough that you can't really fill the frame, so there's gonna be some background on either side of the tree. Do your best to, to look around and, and choose your background. What's behind the tree? Is it bright white sky with clouds? Is it a deep blue sky? Sometimes you might get more movement of the butterflies on the tree, some wings opening, some butterflies taking off. For those, you're obviously gonna have to ramp up your shutter speed to freeze that motion. Just test and experiment throughout. So when the butterflies really get going, you're gonna see them flying in the sky and against a nice blue sky background. You're gonna want that shot. It's one of the most beautiful shots you can have. It's just pure sky, no branches, just butterflies against a blue sky background. For that, a telephoto is again, really, really handy. And start to look for where the butterflies are congregated most. You of course need the most butterflies in your scene as possible. While I'm doing this, I wanna make sure my shutter speed's fast enough to freeze this motion. And I'm just gonna take burst mode photos, a lot of photos, because there's no way you can predict exactly where the butterflies are gonna be. You're just trying to hedge your bets. Finding focus is another really important part. The best way I've found to focus is to find a part of a neighboring tree that is about the same distance as the butterflies. Focus on that, lock the focus, but to try to focus on an individual butterfly is really, really difficult. And that's exactly what I want. All right, so I'm just getting my wide angle back on here. Mine's a 24 to 105, but if you have an ultra wide, that's great too. We just, we're switching out of the telephoto to get a little bit more of the scene, the landscape, the environment. You know, what does it feel like to be here? These trees are just towering. They point to the sky and you get this interesting sort of uh, leading line composition where if you photograph almost directly up or just find some sort of interesting composition where the trees are pointing towards the open sky. I really like that. But what we're really trying to do is show the magnitude of the forest and these towering trees. So pretty, pretty easy settings to be honest. Because we're photographing into the sky, we have a little bit more light coming in, so we're not as worried about uh, needing a slow shutter speed. So let's just do something moderate where we know the, the photos can be frozen. One over 400, F7.1. And I'm just moving around and I'm trying to find the right scene it just makes something interesting. And there I see it. I get nice edges, I get nice leading lines, some cool blue sky. And one thing I'm gonna do is take a lot of test shots because getting the lighting for this is a little bit difficult. And that's the shot right there. 
one of the main shots I want to look for is just the big colony clusters, the dripping, drooping monarchs on the trees with the boughs sort of bending with the weight of the monarchs. It's absolutely spectacular. It's a difficult shot because lighting is obviously challenging. The monarchs roost in areas deliberately to be in the shadows. So what we have here is kind of one of my ideal scenes where we have a nice swath of brightly lit monarchs against a darker background of more monarchs. What I can do there is I can actually manually underexpose my shot. If I don't do that, those brightly lit monarchs are just gonna be completely blown out and we're gonna lose all that beautiful orange color. And, you know, we are in a dimly lit forest, so when I'm in dark conditions, I don't hesitate to portray that in my shots. I don't need it evenly exposed. I love being creative, I love being artistic, I love thinking about things differently, things, you know, looking at things a different way than other people do. Every single person behind a camera has a different set of eyes, a different set of creative guidance, and I think it's a lot of fun to show people the world in the way that I see it. There are a lot of people that don't get the chance to see what we're seeing out here, and portraying it in a very real, very beautiful, very, you know, sort of enigmatic way is it's, it's awesome. I mean, it saves species, it saves habitats, it gets people to fall in love. And I think photography is a big part of getting the world to know these beautiful places, getting to know things so they can love it and save it. So there's conservation is a big part of why I love photography.